Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go through the three most commonly used instructions in Rockwell Automation Studio 5000. The XIC examine if closed instruction, the XIO examine if open instruction, and the OTE output energized instruction. For this video, we're going to be using one of our Compact Logics trainers. I'll put a link to those in the description. And also please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week and ask any questions that come up during these down in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's video. So we're gonna start with a new program and we're gonna select a 1769-L16ER-BB1B, which is the Compact Logics controller on the front of our trainers. And we'll just call this our bit instructions. And then we're going to be using revision 32 and under expansion IO, make sure you select zero modules because right now we don't have any expansion modules on the side of our compact logics. We're not going to be using any security. So go ahead and click finish. And then with our basic program, studio 5,000 has already created our main task and our main program, which will be a continuous task. Now we're going to talk about the different types of tasks and programs later, but right now we're just going to use, the main task, main program, main routine. And everything we're gonna need, at least by default, is going to be on our favorites tab. But if you go over here to the bit tab, they'll also be there. So we're gonna drag down this examine on instruction and then click the drop down by it. And we're gonna go for local colon one colon I, and that is our inputs. And then data, and then hit the down arrow by it, and we're gonna select zero. Now our trainer is still wired per its getting started guide, and button one is gonna be wired to input zero. And actually in this exercise, we're gonna use button one, light one, and light two. Now it can look a little confusing with this long address here that we have. So first, let's go ahead and add a description to this one. So let's right click it and edit main operand description. And we're gonna make this one button one. And now we're gonna drag down this output energize instruction. And last time we used the drop down. Well, you don't actually have to use that. If you just highlight it, you can start typing local and it's gonna start filling everything out for you. So we want local one, but we don't want a C. We want an O for output and then press dot, then press period, data, period, and we're gonna use zero, which is wired to our green light. Let's go ahead and right click it and let's edit the main operand description. And this time let's put in light one. So now let's add a second rung. So right here, the left one is gonna be rung. So drag it down. And this time we're gonna look at an examine off instruction. And we're gonna look at the exact same address. So let's highlight that. And let's just right click it and copy. And then we can paste it right in there. And now let's bring down another output energize instruction. And this time we're gonna look at our yellow light or light two. So that is going to be local colon one colon o dot data dot zero. Oops, I'm sorry, not, not zero. We wanted one there. So one and right click and let's add a description to it. And we'll make this light two. So let's go ahead and download this and see how it works. Now, if you need any help with the configuring your communications or downloading, just look down in the description. We'll have videos for all that. Especially early on, don't forget to put your PLC back in the run mode. You would be surprised the number of times that people call and say, hey, my program's not working and we find out that they have it in program mode. So as soon as you get it going, you should see your yellow light come on, your green light should be off. And on the surface, if we press button one, the green light comes on, the yellow light goes off. We let off of the green button, then the green light goes off, the yellow light comes on. 
But let's dig into these instructions a little more and make sure we understand how they work. So the first instruction we come to is this examine closed instruction. So what does an examine closed instruction do? Well, I can go along with a lot of things that people say, but the one that absolutely I cannot go for is this is a normally open instruction. This is not a normally open instruction. This is not an electrical diagram. This right here is a PLC instruction, an examine if closed instruction, or as I prefer to say, go look for a one. Where at local colon one colon I colon data dot zero. And if you want to figure out really quick whether it has one or not, one you can mouse over here and you can actually see, oh, I can't, well, I can't move my cursor. But it, if you look down a little bit over what's being shown when you mouse over, it says value zero. So this instruction is going and looking for a one, it found a zero, so it's gonna be false. So it's gonna pass false conditions over to this output energized instruction. And a false OTE is gonna go right as zero. Where to? Local colon I colon O dot data dot zero. And again, you can mouse over this instruction and you can see it has a value of zero. So then it's going to get to the end of this rung. It's going to go over to the beginning of rung one. And this instruction, which is our examine if open instruction, is again, definitely not a normally closed instruction. It's going to say, go look for a zero. Where? At local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. Do I have one? Yes, it was looking for a zero. When we mouse over it, we see a zero. So it's gonna pass true conditions on to our output energized instruction. And a true output energized is gonna go right as one, where to? local colon one dot o dot data dot one. And that is why the yellow light's on. Now let's go through it again. When we press the button, this instruction's gonna go look for a one. Where? At local colon one dot i dot data dot zero. Now I showed you how to mouse over and see it, but let's say you wanted to see a bigger picture of the data around it. You can right click it and go to monitor edit force value and that's going to bring up all of them right around here this is actually the controller tags is what we're viewing and we do have a one now this comes up as a tab here so we can quickly bounce back and forth between these so really this is a preference whether you rather mouse over them to see what the value is or whether you would rather do it this way let's go back here and this instruction is going and looking for a one where we're just going to shorten this for now let's just say it input zero do i have one yes so it's going to be true it's going to pass true conditions on and a true ote is going to go write a one where to output zero it goes and writes a one here and then while we haven't been through this scan cycle too much yet at a set interval actually it's called the rpi the plc is going to take whatever's in these boxes that we're seeing in the controller tags and it's going to update so after the ote it's going to go over to rung one this is going to say go look for a zero where at input one do i have one no i have a one and it's looking for a zero so it's going to pass false conditions on to this ote and a false ote is going to go right as zero where to output one so that's the basics of your three major bit instructions now i know you want to move right on really quick because you're like okay got that let's move on to timers let's move on to counters but just take a moment and make sure you do truly understand how these three instructions work they are by far the three most misunderstood instructions in plc programming also, um, one thing I thought about, you know, I was showing you how to do this mouse over here. Um, right now we have a value of zero on button one. And when you press the button, it actually does update it. You saw it blank out for a second. It updates that value. Now, I don't know how fast, like if I hit it like that, eh, we're kind of hitting it some. But if you go over to controller tags, we're catching it pretty good. So I do think, it, especially if you're really monitoring for something that you want to make sure that you see happen, the controller tags is probably a better place to do it. And I'll we'll actually show you later trending and some other things where you can really catch values that you need to see. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Coming up, we have, we're going to talk some about aliasing. Then we're going to talk about uh, timers, counters, 
Now we're gonna hit scan cycle, sealing wrongs, all types of fun things coming up. In fact, just looking at the list, there's like 30 videos getting ready to come out on this. So make sure you're subscribed. Till next time. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.